Okay, we're back with some more look at uniform distributions. This morning we're going to make a connection to the CDF graph and its formula. So let's derive a CDF for a uniform distribution in order to connect the properties of the PDF and CDF uh, formulas and graphs. So let's let X be uniform from 5 to 10 and then use that graph. Let's get a graph of the, of the uh, PDF and then use that graph uh, and our knowledge of uniform distributions and our knowledge of areas of rectangles to compute these following probabilities. These are notice that these are all cumulative probabilities. So the outputs that you get here, your answers are going to be outputs for the CDF function. Okay, so I'm going to let you work on this a little bit and come back when you have it worked out. Press pause now. Okay, well hopefully you've worked it out and you notice some of these things. So for example, for these that are for four, four and a half, and five, we're over in this area. So anything over in this area, the uh, y value, uh, the, the cumulative probability is zero because there's no, there's nothing over here. There's no area here between the curve and the x-axis. It's that curve is on the x-axis. Okay. Now the probability that x is less than five and a half. Now when you get to five and a half, notice it's picking up a rectangle. I'm not going to draw it out here, but it's right here. Okay. And you notice that what's going to happen then is it picks up a half uh, wide here and then uh, something tall. Well, I guess we better figure out how tall it is. So this one's going from 5 to 10. That's the length of 5. So it must be one-fifth tall. So the PDF formula is one-fifth or 0.2 uh, for x is between 5 and 10 and 0 outside of that. So if we know we, we get one-half times point is 0.1 so we pick up an area 0.1 when we go to the right another half we pick up another area 0.1 so it comes up to be 0.2 so it's one wide and 0.2 tall or in other words when we go from 5 to 6 when we went to the right one we picked up an area of of uh, 0.2 one fifth and if I go to the right one more from 6 to 7 I pick up another one fifth okay and so that goes to uh, another 0.2. So that goes up to 0.4. And every time I add 1 to the input here at 7, I make it to 8, I'm adding another 0.2. So it goes to 0.6. And then when I go from 8 to 9, it goes adds up another 0.2 to 0.8. And from 9 to 10, it adds another 0.2 up to 1. So it's just adding it up. Because these are rectangles, we're adding the same amount every time, which means the CDF is growing up by a constant amount. Now, once we get to 10, of course, anything beyond that has a y value of 1. So if we're going to graph the CDF, okay, then we would notice uh, several interesting things here. We would notice that, um, well, let's just look at the table. So this is putting the numbers that we just had in the table, and the probability that x is less than whatever this number here is on the left is the value of the CDF. These are the numbers we just came up with. Now what I want you to do is actually graph those order pairs and make a CDF graph. What do you notice about these particular things? Use graph paper so that it works out correctly. Okay, so you can work that out carefully on your own. Press pause now. Okay, so if you did that then you will notice that the graph of these dots is always in a straight line. In fact, what makes it straight is the fact that every time we go to the right one, we're picking the same amount. So I've got these grid lines marked off in one. So each one of these little rectangles you see right here is 0.2 or 1 fifth. So when I go to the right, I pick go up 1 fifth. I go to the right one more, I go up another fifth. And I go to the right one, I go up another fifth. And right one more, I go up another fifth another fifth, and finally the last fifth puts us up at one. So that the y value here, remember on the CDF, is the same as this cumulative area here to the left of that under the PDF. And so the fact that this is coming, we're, we're adding our density here at a constant rate, makes this have a constant slope. And in fact, what is the slope of this? In general, the slope of a curve is how much you're going, especially the slope of line, is how much the, the graph goes up or down when we go to the right one. In this case, every time we go to the right one, we go up one-fifth. 
which is exactly the slope, which is exactly the y value of that uh, curve right here. Of course, it has a slope of zero because it's horizontal, but the y value here is one fifth, and that's the slope of this slanted part of this graph. So uh, let's write down a formula for the CDF. See if you can do that now. Well, you might want to remember uh, a couple things about Algebra 1 review. What makes a line straight is the fact that the slope, which we usually use the letter M for it, is constant. In other words, going to the right one from any point on the graph results in another point on the graph, which is M units vertically from the first point. The slope between some arbitrary point on the graph, XY, and a given specific point, X1, Y1, equals some constant M. Okay. So again, these points X1, Y, XY is an arbitrary point on the line, and the X1, Y1 is an arbitrary point on the uh, a given point on the line, and then they they have that same slope constant. So what do we mean by slope? A slope is the change in y divided by the change in x, delta y over delta x. That is the y uh, of this point minus the y of that point, y minus y1, that's delta y, and delta x would be the x minus x1. So that is a constant, and I'm thinking of x1, y1 as some point we know on the line, the x, y are our variables, our variable points, and m is some known constant number. We'll multiply both sides by this denominator here, and we get y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, and add y1 to both sides, we get y equals m times parentheses x minus x1, close parentheses, plus y1. This is called the point slope form of the linear equation. It has slope m, and it goes to the point x1, y1. Notice that there is a separate point slope formula uh, for a line for every single point on that line. There are infinitely many points on the line, so there are infinitely many point slope forms of that line. They all look like this. They just have different numbers for x1, y1. If it's the same line, then they all have the same m. Now, a couple of these we might be specifically interested in. One is if we know the, the y-intercept, 0, y sub 0, and I put in 0 for x1 and y sub 0 for y1. That's uh, Anytime you have x is 0, uh, that's going to be on the y-axis. So that's the y-intercept of this line. And so that reduces to y equals, well, the x minus x sub 0, x 0 is, uh, I mean, x minus 0 is just x. So this is y equals mx plus y sub 0. That's called the slope-intercept form of the linear equation, or I'm going to emphasize it because and call it the slope-y-intercept form of the linear equation. Uh, you may be more familiar with calling the y sub 0 b. So a lot of you may be familiar with calling this y equals mx plus b. It's the same thing. Instead of b, I'm just calling it y sub 0. Because why? Because it's the y value when x is 0. But this is not the only useful form. This is uh, a, another useful point is the x-intercept form of the line. And so we can plug in the x-intercept. And the x-intercept would be uh, where y is 0. And so I guess I'll call that x, x sub 0 that goes with it. That's the x when y is 0. So I plug in x sub 0 right here for x1. And I plug in 0 for y1. And so we get y equals m x times parentheses, x minus x of 0, close parentheses, plus 0. Well, the plus 0 I can drop off, and it reduces to this factored form, y equals m times parentheses, x minus x of 0. That's the factored form, or the slope x-intercept form. Notice that there's only one x-intercept and only one y-intercept for linear functions. So the y-intercept form is unique. The x-intercept form is also equally unique. And they're both good. Uh, you're probably more familiar with using the y-intercept form, slope y-intercept form, but the slope x-intercept form is more useful if we know the x-intercept. And that's exactly the situation we're going to be in in the problem we're working. So let's just, re just see how this works out graphically. Here's a particular line. I've given the equation of this line in four different forms. Here's the slope y-intercept form, negative 1 half x plus 6. 
This says that 0, 06 is on the graph. That should be on the y-axis. 0, 06 right there. And the slope is negative 1 half, so it says we go the right one, we go down a half. Right one, down a half. Or right two, down one. Right two, down one. So there's the slope y-intercept form. It also has an x-intercept form here at 12, 0, which you can see. And so that should be also negative 1 half parentheses x minus 12. Again, the slope is negative 1 half with the same interpretation, right 1 down a half from any point on the graph, but the point we know is the point 12, 0. But we also find other points, like here's the point 8, 2, that looks like that's on it, okay? So then it should be the slope, negative 1 half, times parentheses a, x minus 8 plus 2. That should go through 8, 2, and has the same slope. Uh, here's another one, uh, 2, 5, that looks like a point right there. So I could center it up there, negative 1 half times parentheses x minus 2 plus 5. So that these last two are, are what we call point slope forms, and the first two are uh, intercept forms. The first one's a slope y-intercept form, the second one is a slope x-intercept form. So in particular, we're mainly interested in this case where it's crossing the x-axis, because that's what we're going to have in our picture in a minute. Okay, And so we know that uh, if it crosses the x-axis at 12, 0, uh, then we can put it in this form slope times x minus 12. And if you think about that, that's exactly the situation we're in here. We're wanting to find the equation of this line. Now this part out here is y equals 0. That's easy. This part over here is also easy. That's just y equals 1. This is y equals m times parentheses x minus x sub 0, where the a is the x sub 0. So it's just slope times x minus a. In this case, a is 5, so it's x minus 5 times whatever the slope is. Okay, And the slope, remember, we decided was the same as the PDF graph uh, formula. So CDF of x equals 0 for x is less than a. 1 for x is greater than b, and it's linear between increasing from 0, y equals 0, up to y equals 1. So what's the formula of that middle piece? It's the slope, 1 over b minus a, which is there, is that slope. And it's times x minus a, because x a is the x-intercept. So a formula would be CDF of x equals 0 for x less than a. 1 for x greater than b, and for x is between a and b, it's 1 over b minus a, which is our slope, times x minus a, which could also be rewritten this way. So there, side by side, are the formulas and graphs of the um, PDF up here in red and the CDF down here in purple. And once again, just to reinforce the, uh, the, the way that this works out, as this point goes to the right, you're accumulating more area here, which is probability, and that's the same as the y value here. This is geometry sketchpad sketch that I got I made for working with uniform distributions. So here I can type in a value of a. Let's say we want to go from 1 to, uh, oh, let's go to 20. And we can graph that there. We have... Uh, we can control the scale here. Let's move this down here close to the bottom of the screen. So there's A is 1, B is 20. And we can graph that. And it changes our scale. Notice the wider this is, the shorter this is here. So if I make this a little narrower by bringing this in, let's say to 8, for example, now we are taller here. Okay, let's just work with that one from 1 to 8. Oh, let's make it a little bit easier. Let's say, let's go to, well, let's go to 11. So that makes this 1 tenth tall. Okay, so if I want to uh, look at some probabilities, I'm look at, looking at something like this, which are areas. And I can compute those areas by just finding the width of that box times the height, which is 
height is one tenth each time. Here's the graph of the CDF. Uh, I think this one's controlled by sliding this point. But notice when I start here, I have a cumulative probability of zero. There's nothing to the left. But as I slide to the right, every time I slide to the right one unit, I'm picking up one tenth, and then another tenth, and another tenth, and so forth. But as I move to the right, I'm at a uniform rate. I am picking up more and more probability density. So since it's uniform rate, it goes and increases at a straight line way, at a constant rate. Now, of course, once you get to the B value, which in this case was uh, 11, you've reached the entire probability, a total area of 1. And so from there to the right, it stays 1. Okay, so you can kind of see that accumulating there. And then I pulled that over for this slide. So in the next, next one we'll, video, we'll talk a little bit about parameters, mean, median, and so forth.